Hi, everybody. Um, Champs, hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm surprised this many people want to hear me blather on about stuff. Uh, <laughs> they came for Lynn. That's true. <laughs> everybody came here for Lynn. I think that's really the reality of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see everybody here, and I don't believe uh, <laughs> Um, I promise I won't use my YouTube voice and scare the heck out of people. Hello, everybody. No, I won't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won't even be able to use my normal voice. I'm on Apple headphones. Or no, no, wait. They're Huawei knockoff headphones. Oh, well, you, you sound very, very, very handsome, I'm sure. Oh. That's how it works. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've got me beat on that one. Um, but anyways. <laughs> oh, we are very, very happy to be um, running this panel because it is something that is true to our hearts. Um, I would like to start by introducing the other two members of the panel. Um, first of all, um, Chamex, could you uh, tell us all about yourself um, and we'll get started. Well, uh, Lynn, thank you. Um, I guess I stumbled on this project a few years ago called Atheon and ended up some gentleman named Brian Rapp had a long legacy of stuff that I ended up inheriting. and. Fast forward a while and eat way too much dinner and try and do a talk on a phone instead of at my computer and <laughs> this, that's where I am now. Um, if you need anything else, there's always a website that you can check out. It's atheon.net, but I'm sure you may know. So, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, we also have here a VIP, uh, Garrett Zimmer. Garrett um, is the the founder of MindGate. Um, say hello and tell us about yourself. Hi. Well, I don't know how I'm going to follow that amazing life story of Chamonks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I guess I packed too much into my life. Chamonks, I think you have a lot more going for you than just that short mm -hmm. little snippet, but I'm sure that will come up. Um, yes. I've had the pleasure. So I have, uh, I came from a, a former background of being a YouTuber. Uh, so I'm also known as PB Jelly Games, and I got a chance to hang out with uh, Gizzy Gaza and um, Tomahawk1989, Netty Plays, uh, even Stampy. I've played in games with him and hung out with those guys for a long time. Um, and I kind of moved myself into the build world because I saw this great, tremendous need for education to uh, to be driven by builders. Uh, you know, the, the reality is I... I wanted to see Minecraft drive forward into education. I thought, you know, I've seen some of these amazing builders do amazing things. And to be able to bring some of those showcases into the world as classroom modules would be fantastic. So I started MindGage up uh, doing just that. Uh, brought Lynn on board very shortly after we started, and we've been doing it ever since. I'm now one of the uh, 60 Minecraft mentors around the world, harnessed by Microsoft to help engage teachers in the world of Minecraft and bring it to their classrooms. But I'll tell you one little thing to kind of give a boost to uh, to Chamonks over here. I've had the mm -hmm. opportunity, and we've had the opportunity with MindGage to work with Atheon a couple of times uh, with fantastic results, amazing results for some of our projects working with Intel uh, and a number of other organizations. Um, and bringing it into education. So Chamonks has done a great job so far uh, working with that. We're happy to be partnering with them. Oh, you can blame my team for that one. I'm just the guy. Well, that time. too. That too. <laughs> I see a couple of names that I recognize in here. Kevisaurus, for example. Uh, Yay, absolutely Kibby. brilliant, brilliant builder. And if you do uh, slash warp medical, you'll be able to see one of his pieces that he did for us in Intel. Um, oh, <laughs> but as well, another person I do want to give a shout out to before I forget is OKK70, who is also an educator and she is also yes. in the education field and a builder as well. So again, it's nice to see such uh, good representation here. Anyway, that's enough out of me. <laughs> um, yeah, that is fantastic. Um, I'm Lynn Tilfer. I've been involved with Minecraft for, oh, yeah, coming up five years, it feels like. Uh, yeah, I started just by building. Um, I wanted to make sure that Minecraft chat was safe for my daughter. That was the first mm. thing that I was checking out. Wow, um, that's tough. Yeah, so I basically got on there and watched what was said. And I found that um, the community was friendly, supportive, wonderful. And I got sucked in, basically. And she and I built together. Um, I 
ended up on a wonderful build server called Puego, which became Puego Insomnia, which became Athian. Um, <laughs> and I have absolutely had a joy of building. And um, I noticed that a lot of my students did too. And I noticed that there was a lot of wonderful skills and knowledge and qualities that came out of that. And so when Garrett asked almost two years ago to the day, um, yeah. hey, are you interested in doing anything educational with Minecraft? Wow, I don't think we've had a day that we haven't discussed it. Um, <laughs> so it, it became a real passion to join education and Minecraft together. And it has just gone from strength to strength. Hence, here we are. So um, it's it's been incredible. Um, so let, let's start talking about Athian itself. Um, I, I I must admit I'm biased because I've had such an affinity with with the the oh, community yeah. and people are still there that were there years ago. And to me, that says a lot about the community. Um, the building has been high quality all the way through, and that's where I learned. That's really where I learned to, to build and really, really enjoy it and be challenged by it. So, Chemex, tell us all about Athian. Well, uh, I mean, what would you like to know, really? Everything about it, your, your, your philosophy <laughs> of why it exists, um, the successes, everything. Well, um, it, it's interesting because it came out of this whole uh, – turbulent past I, I i noticed when i was in the ecosystem kind of vicariously looking in from the outside is i don't actually build anything i know the techniques i can teach all i want but you know don't ask me to build anything i'll never finish um <laughs> <laughs> that, that said i i i think i owned atheon for all of maybe two weeks before we started actually turning it around from this really toxic sort of like, why did anyone bother making this sort of thing to mm -hmm. all of a sudden, hey, look, it's self-sustaining and it's been that way ever since. And I've been doing my best to make sure that everything has been as ethical as possible throughout the entire experience, which means I generally have to do, do a lot more paperwork than I want to do. And I have- Yes. <laughs> My screen went dark and my push to talk went away. Sorry about that. <laughs> I guess that's a new quirk I'm going to have to fight with throughout this. <laughs> but uh, anyways, like, it, you know, there's a lot of paperwork and it's really interesting to see how it works out. But realistically, it's all just to make sure that everybody knows what the situations are because no one was doing this um, two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So they would just like walk in and suddenly a contract would come in and somebody would get screwed over or somebody would misinterpret something. And one of the first biggest things that we did is we just said, well, no, let's just lay it out, lay it out clear, lay it out flat. And it seems that everyone else has picked up on that. So I want to I, I want to take a step quickly away from that for a quick moment and just see, you know, because my engage. Uh, so our company and I'll, I'll just take over for a brief moment, if you don't mind, Lynn. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I you. you know, uh, reached out certainly a, a little while ago, probably about a year and a bit ago, uh, when we started doing a project to Atheon and we, you know, saw some uh, tremendous potential. Uh, the pricing was good, and I think that's, mm -hmm. a, you know, for, for everybody, <laughs> it's always an important thing. Um, I'll echo uh, Chamonks' statements. I am a businessman. I'm a manager. I, I work with people, and I work with teams, and I deal with that. Um, mainly, I work with big businesses and, and try and, and bring all that doesn't ever sound it. like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I, I, I try to make it sound like I know what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, realistically, one of the, the reasons why we've continued to work with Atheon and the builders there is because I think you guys have a, a, a special approach, and it's something that I hope that actually quickly becomes not so special. I hope that you know, those of you who are joining, and I don't mean that uh, negatively, but those of you who are joining in this panel right now, you guys are all, I assume, builders. You have a, oh, yeah. a desire to 
uh, to be in the build environment. And what I want to point out here, why I'm saying I hope it doesn't become so special is because I think the more builders that we get involved in the active Minecraft education community, the better it's going to be for our children, the better it's going to be for everybody else. And there are going to be monetization opportunities. Currently, they're few and far between, but there are going to be opportunities. And so this is something that I want you to speak to, Chamonks, as the leader of a build team, as the owner of a build team. Um, what do you see for the future of Minecraft education partnerships with uh, the build community and ways to sort of monetize that? Do you see that this potential is there? Well, and that's the biggest question, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, Lynn very specifically has this wonderful quote that I, I repeat more often than I should without giving her credit. Um, <laughs> but I guess how, how are the people even going to know you're from us? Australia. Anyway, I'm sure I, I, I've said it once or twice. But anyways, you said, uh, I think you famously said, uh, I want, I, sorry, all of a sudden someone decided they wanted to call me on my phone. Um, you said specifically, teaching is the only job that you steal from work or home and bring to work. Everyone else does the opposite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is a pretty, I think pretty much sums up the whole ecosystem. So when you walk in and the weather is that interesting, you have a very difficult time seeing um, potential. But realistically, when you think about it, there's plenty of other opportunities that are surrounding the situation that most people aren't even prepared to see. And yeah, I absolutely think that it will be something that could happen. Um, if, if that sort of answers your question. I don't really want to necessarily spoil it too much. Um, <laughs> at least <laughs> keep established something. Granted, of course, we do always make sure to open source stuff and give out things because the more stuff when it comes to tools that, of course, we've been specking out for the Minecraft EDU situation, um, the more stuff we give out to the community, the more talent picks up the skills to use the tools that we use to help us, to help them, etc. And we can teach people. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, I was just wondering if we could now talk a bit more about MindGage itself um, and the philosophy about why it began and what we've been doing. Uh, Garrett, sure. I'm going to pass it on to you. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pass it back on to you because, um, you know, we, <laughs> we, we spoke on this very briefly at the beginning. Uh, but Lynn Telfer is actually my director of education. So Lynn has a, uh, a long history as a teacher. Uh, I'm sure many of you that know her know this. She's very passionate about what she does. And as our director of education, she's had a major hand in guiding the direction of MindGage. So from my perspective, though, I am a game developer. I'm a game designer from probably about the age of seven years old. I started designing my first Dungeons and Dragons game. Um, and, you know, it just constantly flowed from there. And I found within Minecraft this absolutely amazing tool where I didn't have to be a graphic designer. I didn't have to be a, a perfect builder. I didn't have to be a coding or command block expert in order to make a game that would actually impact people and be fun. Uh, and of course, I'm very much of a role play scenario. So MindGage, one of the, the core tenets of MindGage is really about developing learning games. So creating the serious game methodology in the world of education where kids get to come on board and play the same types of mini games that you guys are creating on a regular basis with your command block partners. And yet there's an educational component to it. And so my goal was always to kind of bring that in line with the mainstream education system. And luckily, I'm considered one of the thought leaders in that area in that uh, game-based learning field. And then, you know, from the education perspective, the rest of it from MindGage uh, is really Lynn's tenets to explain. So, Lynn, why don't you do MindGage some justice and do yourself some justice here by explaining <laughs> your perspective? All right. Um, when you first said back in April 12, two years ago, um, Lynn, are you interested in doing something educational with Minecraft? I jumped. I, th I think I jumped to the moon and back um, for that opportunity uh, because I didn't really know anybody else who was actually interested in that sort of field. And I felt a bit isolated. I had no real understanding of, of how powerful it was out there. Um, and 
uh, I'm just going to tell you about my first programming experience. It was back on a Commodore uh, VIC-20 with one of those uh, cassette tapes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that was my first game. Um, and I've always loved game development and I've taught it for quite a, a long time. And on the, on the idea that game development was about, um, you know, using your creativity and wonderful things like that and then getting into coding. Um, but it's become so much more than that. Absolutely. And it's so much more. Um, and with the, the start of Minecraft where I, I suddenly found this, this beautiful caring community that were willing to support me and laugh with me and go crazy. Um, I discovered that there was so much more to Minecraft as, as well. When I started moving into helping out with the servers, to running a server, to, to setting up the plugins, um, and then meeting the oh, hundreds and hundreds of people that I've been involved with. It, with um, That's got to be one of my favorite parts. Yeah, it's it's amazing the skills that these people have. I mean, you just just it's talk just to the it. Brilliance, the sheer brilliance that I oh, encounter every absolutely. day just because of this environment. It's incredible. It is, and that's one thing that really got to me as an educator, and as a a person that is involved with my engage is the kids have got some amazing skills out there, and we need to tap into that, and we need to make that valid in the classroom and in society. And that's where I, I've been very, very fortunate to work with Garrett because we've we've done some really amazing projects in the time. We will be talking and actually showing those, uh, some of those projects as well. Um, and we have more planned. Yeah, and we do oh, have a lot to more show planned. off too. And, yeah, and this <laughs> never stops. I, I, I'm never going to retire. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, I come from the point of view, not as a business person, um, I, I'm, I'm more the, the passionate educator and sometimes Garrett has to say, whoa there, let's put some logic yeah, in, well, not all passion. <laughs> uh, my, my big thing is this, I, I mean, you guys are all out there passionately building and doing what you love to do, and my job is to make sure you guys get paid. Right? Yes. Right? That's the bottom line, I think, you know, for me, well, it's everybody yeah. needs to eat. <laughs> And, and like, that's the thing is like, that's what I usually <laughs> tend to tell people. I'm like, I can enjoy my time doing pretty much anything. It's whether yeah. or not I can get paid to do that. That's the real trick, isn't it? Like, that's always the so, good See, one. this is why we need you. <laughs> because um, <laughs> I'll, I'll say to Garrett, oh, let's do Project X. This is a great idea. Woohoo. And you go, okay, let's work out the logistics. And then we work it out. Um, yeah, so if you that's it's paid, a great it's team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And um, it, it's just been an amazing ride. And even the things that we go, you know what? That hasn't worked out because of this X, Y, Z reason. The amount of learning that has happened. I have not stopped learning since day one. And sometimes it's amazing to look back on that. And, and I thoroughly- Pretty much have to write it down. <laughs> oh, it's amazing, yeah. And, and so, so that's what MindGage has been to me is, is we've been able to bring a lot of that those skills and everything into the classroom, make it valid. And I, I'm very excited about the future of, of MindGage as well. So we've we've talked a lot about MindGage already. We've talked a bit about Atheon and we want to get back mm -hmm. to some of the work that Atheon's doing. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, let's talk a little bit more about sort of the educational focus that is here. Yeah, I think exactly. That's what everybody what is, is here for really. So, you know, I, I'm going to ask the next question for you and Chamonks, if you guys can briefly answer it. Why is education in Minecraft becoming such an important focus? And Lynn, you brought up a couple of points, so make some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> why, right, why I was just thinking, hey, I'm already answering. And, you know, even beyond why it's important just in a general education stream of things, why is mm -hmm. it important for builders to start to become involved and to start to see ways that they can uh, bring their experiences to bear on this world? Well, go ahead, Chuck. Do you want to go? go no, you go first. It's all good. Well, no, how about you go first? Somebody <laughs> go first. <laughs> I, I have first. an idea. <laughs> all right. Wait. Um, What I... I I'm noticing is um, education is going through a revolution um, in terms of that we cannot just keep teaching content. 
Uh, we can't just say, well, you have got, you know, 19 out of 24 maths, well done. We, we've got to be able to instill a lot more 21st century learning and, and thinking. Yeah. And because and so of that- I'm gonna stop you for a second, Lynn, just because the majority of people here are probably not teachers, so they may not understand I know. what we mean yeah. by 21st century learning. <laughs> and I was well, about to explain that. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, so basically we're, we're looking at basic things like, um, we're looking at critical thinking, problem solving, being able to, to work out your own methodology of learning as well, how to learn and be lifelong learners as well. Um, and, and those skills now are far more critical than they used to be, um, dare I say, when I started, um, <laughs> because <laughs> you, you're not going to be stuck in one, one uh, profession for the rest of your life. You, uh, the, the next generation Didn't are going to have... The average is like every 19 months somebody has a new yes, job? Exactly. It, it's, a, it's a fluid, evolving, wonderful, dynamic um, State I feel now. like somebody needs to make an app that just like lets you transition <laughs> from employer to employer. So if somebody wants to take that idea, just like send me an email. <laughs> I don't care. I don't want the money. Just let me know that you did it. <laughs> well, isn't that exactly what we're doing? Because that, that's, um, we're, we're making it that, that these skills are now available for students. Um, and that's where um, the future of Minecraft and education come together. Because we're already seeing those skills, as I said, and we want to, to make them valid. So um, we've, we've seen well, that Microsoft have, have bought um, um, Minecraft. And I, I was scared at the start, but why, 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 why are they doing this? And their, their focus on Minecraft and education has been fantastic. And I'm, I'm very, very glad to be involved in that. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit soon. But... Um, I think it's a it's a very very powerful direction that we're going, and the fact that teachers, educators, and people involved with the education sector are, are very heavily involved and listened to. It's interesting that at the beginning you were uh, mentioning modernizing education. I, mm. I think it's absolutely phenomenal that Minecraft has essentially taken what used to be a two dimensional learning plane and essentially. Whereas, like, there have been a lot of 3D creation studios in the past, nothing mm. has existed before that has been so immersive and so low entry fee. You know, literally 30, mm. 30 something dollars. What is it to buy it this today? Like, I don't know. I bought it in like beta. I have no idea what it costs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and they've taken what used to be a pen and paper and have created this 3D immersive experience that people can create a fully immersive world to put you into understanding and learning. And, and, and it's just absolutely amazing. I, can't, like, I really wish that I had what the next generation is going to have. I think, I think we I all agree. say that. I mean, if we look back at, uh, at when we were in school, we're like, oh, my God, I wish I was in school today. It almost <laughs> makes you want to redo it just for the heck of it, you know? Like, oh, yeah. That, that's the beauty of being a teacher. I am getting to redo it. <laughs> I mean, they do say the best, ways, the best way to learn is to teach, right? So. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, oh, absolutely. To, to move forward, just because, you know, we want to be cognizant of people's Absolutely. time, yeah, of course, um, I, want to, I want to kind of give people my perspective. A first perspective I want to give is from the business side of things. Um, education is moving, and it's moving in a completely different direction. It's moving in a direction where game-based learning is becoming powerful, and I'm probably going to upset a lot of people when I say this. Um, Minecraft was not originally put together to be a design platform. It is a beautiful design platform, don't get me wrong. He didn't even but come up with a good name. You one do of two the, things in it. Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> um, but one of the amazing things that we have the opportunity to do with education, especially with game-based learning, uh, is for you builders to create these immersive environments. And I've seen you guys do some amazing things, uh, whether it's recreating the human body, which I'm sure we'll show you in a, a little bit, oh, yeah. for, so that students can actually go in and explore the interior of the human body, whether it's rebuilding a giant castle where students can go in and you know explore the city of London like Rockworks has done. Um, and we actually, I'll give a plug out to us. We, we came up with that idea well before. 
Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the ideas are there, and if we can create them in a way that captures children's imagination and allows them to play a game at the same time, that is where the power of education is going to be. So I think, you know, the fact that Minecraft or Microsoft put $2.5 billion into it and are still to this mm -hmm. day investing heavily into the education side of it, that yes. says to me as a business person that this is a ramping area of opportunity. And the secondary portion that I want to say in terms of the 21st century learning is it's not just about training you guys for the jobs that may or may not be tomorrow or, or the jobs that are flexible. It's about giving you guys an opportunity to develop your passions and learn to make money from those passions. Which Absolutely. now that we've seen Microsoft put out the marketplace, you're going to start to see that type of environment even more. And I think the build community is really going to value or gain a lot of value from that. Uh, as well, if you guys can bridge over into education, you're going to be providing your amazing experience to kids to inspire them to do the same and hopefully build their own passionate business or passionate enterprise or work with a passionate build team to, uh, to grow from there. So multitude of opportunities, mm -hmm. I think, in the, the educational environment from you know, giving our kids a better way to learn, a funner way to learn, where it's not, <laughs> all right, class, let's talk about Shakespeare. Open up your textbooks to chapter. None of that anymore. It's let's go in and oh. explore Shakespeare. So that's, for me, what, uh, mm -hmm. what's really big uh, in terms of education and why the mix of Minecraft coming into it is such an important focus. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I cannot wait to um, to throw away the Shakespeare activity sheet. Uh, <laughs> We're not throwing um, it away. We're putting it into my Exactly. Quite, quite. No, trust me. Um, it, it, in, in a way, it does get thrown away because we do such a better job that the, the other one does not even compare. <laughs> my, um, Minecraftification of your uh, worksheets. There, absolutely. Uh, we we can do so much more than a piece of paper can even, you know, contemplate. Um, in fact, what, one thing I'm going to be doing in the, the Mind Fair convention that I'm going to be presenting at is I'm actually going to have a activity sheet in my hand about the topic I'm talking about, and my Minecraft character behind me will yell at me and tell me to drop it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, it's really important that we, we understand that there is so much more out there now that we've got this amazing virtual world where you can go any place, any time, and interact in many, many ways. Um, and one thing that I'd like to just very quickly um, talk about is why do kids actually love Minecraft? And in, in this particular context, why do kids love building? What is it about the fact that we, <laughs> I call myself a kid too, okay? Why is it that people my age, right down to the first person that gets, you know, hold of Minecraft as a young age, loves to put the blocks together? What is it? I think it's just the simplicity. You, you literally just have an unlimited resource in which you can create. If you were to rewind the world about 20 years, you could look around and say, wow, I got to get a patent on an idea before I can create, and then I got to get money to be able to do this and then that, and eventually got to get copyrights and trademarks and all. No, I just pick up a pickaxe and break some stuff and create a thing. And... <laughs> You know, it's not tangible, but I've, I've even gotten into conversations with people where I'm like, listen to this idea. And then I go into this rant and they start spacing out. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've lost them. Let me let, mm -hmm. let me spend five minutes in Minecraft and I will illustrate to you this idea and you'll be like, oh, I get it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, so. Before I answer that question, I want to, you know, we've got a lot of people in this panel here. And one of the yep. big things that I really, really like to see is some interaction and some activity. And guys, don't think that just because this is a panel discussion and, and there's three of us up here that you guys can't chime in with your ideas. So there is a hashtag masterclass panel chat uh, area just up above. You'll see it uh, up before the event rooms and before the voice channels. If you go in there, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that to make, please definitely put them in there. Uh, it's harder for us to kind of look at those questions on the, uh, on the server itself. Well, that's the other thing too, is uh, I, when I asked about what text channel 
difficult to be in. I also got a DM saying about Q dash and dash A. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's the I, one. I also with be another one option. Um, so just keep an eye out because I think we might end up with some disparity between attentions. Um, well, then yeah, let's let's keep the disparity uh, settled, and we'll go with Q and A. So join Wonderful. us in there and ask any questions that you have. We're we're happy to. Um, yeah, it is there, Zane Locks or Zane Law. Um, okay, so you know my big thing in terms of why kids love building, it goes back to my day Lego. It's just free. It's been you can do anything. If you want to be structured, you can be structured. I personally, I love building structured. Um, I I I can't build these crazy weird um, Picasso esque environments. I just can't do it. <laughs> my brain functions on this. <laughs> this very straight line approach, okay? I want to see clean cut lines. I'm very modernist. Um, and that's that. But that's probably why I'm not a builder because I don't have that diversity of skills. But as a kid, when you get into Minecraft, you just, you do it. And the second you place a block on top of another block and another block on top of another block, you start to see this level of accomplishment bridge. And from the mm -hmm. perspective of child psychology, this is immediate feedback you start to see your things coming together. And it's in a way that's that's unlike any other because you can start to see it coming together, but then you can also gauge the functional use of it. You can use it as a shelter at the same time as make it look prettier. The other side of the equation is this level of iteration. Kids get a chance to kind of build on top of it and build on top of it and scale it out and change it and do something different. And this all leads to such a positive motivation. So that's, in my opinion, the the three key reasons why Minecraft represents itself so well uh, to children as they start building. And I'm sure the same thing, being able to let your imagination run wild and see it come together goes for a lot of the builders that are here today. Now, I actually just saw a really interesting question by OK70. I'm going to call you that. I'm sorry if it's not how you want it to be pronounced, but I'm sure you can't speak up and tell me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned that a lot of the builders here may not actually know it's the she. physical differences. She. I can't see that That's close. Okay. It's on a tiny screen. I'm on my phone still. So thank you for correcting me. Um, th that they're, like what the differences are. So between uh, the PC edition, so Java edition, and uh, the EDU edition. So do you mm -hmm. have the ability to speak up on that? Or is there some weird... Yeah. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> Just with, within NDA, of course. Yeah, within NDA. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, both Gary and I are very fortunate to be chosen as uh, Minecraft Global Mentors. And with that, we've been working with the education edition of Minecraft, um, which is out there. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And um, on a website at um, Minecraft, no, educationminecraft.net, um, we have a lot of um, lesson plans that are up there and um, quite a few resources, and we're quite um, active on that. And the education edition is basically um, for schools, and it, it's sort of in its infancy and it's growing all the time. Um, but I have found it to be an incredibly powerful um, version of Minecraft in the classroom, uh, because, simply because I love the way that um, kids can set up servers at a click of a button. Um, it's pretty much all LAN in a way. Um, and because of the special um, educational features that are there, even though there's yet a lot to be added, um, I've found that kids have been able to use that particular version um, in a in a very very effective way, um, and I haven't had to worry about in the Java version, you know, setting up servers or you know that sort of thing. Um, now, with the the concept of the kids building and loving it um, in the classroom, one of the things that I do to assess students is to listen, because the language and the use of um, context that they talk about while they're building and collaborating is incredibly powerful. And I can't get that from an activity sheet. I really can't. Um, they're not going to sit there and go, hey, look at question three. Yes, it's asking all about, you know, Shakespeare's lifestyle. What do you think? It doesn't happen. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, I so... thought that somebody else would do the Shakespearean voice. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically... Seconds, right? <laughs> 
I've, I've actually gone around and just listened, which is great because I'm totally invisible as soon as my craft's up. They're, they're, you know, I don't exist, but everybody else does. Um, so I'm able to... You get, exist get to us, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so it's been really, really amazing, that side of um, I want to cover... Uh, to, to, to talk about the mechanics of... Uh, yeah. uh, and the physical yeah. differences between... Yeah, I want to... Uh, like yeah, the yeah, PC please. and the EDU. Um, Allow me to cover that if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Just because yes, I, I do, do yeah. I did get where uh, where Kay was going on that. And one of the interesting awesome. things that this becomes an important thing for you guys as builders is right now the Minecraft Education Edition is built on the Pocket Edition platform. Uh, so it's basically mm, built on the yes. C plus plus coding that backs the Minecraft Pocket Edition, or um, I believe it's the. Uh, it's, it's got a name. It's not the Anvil format that we're used to. So it is quite a bit different. The build tools are not there. The other thing, as Lynn mentioned, mm. is you guys will not have, unless you join and work with a team like myself, MindGage and Atheon, you guys will not have access to uh, the Minecraft education software to actually test it out or play with exactly. the new blocks or anything yeah. like that. But that's okay because Minecraft is Minecraft is Minecraft is Minecraft, as long as we can convert it. Um, and mm -hmm. so we're looking into and we're exploring a lot of conversion opportunities and those are coming um, as we see. Uh, so and, and maybe, just maybe if people are super nice. No, I'm just kidding. I, we're probably going to maybe <laughs> open source it, maybe sort of. I don't know. Very good. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> or, or, is, or you'll be able to use it on our server because shameless plug. <laughs> Yay! Happy on shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most important thing to keep in mind is, is not really what the differences are. Um, the fact is, still build the way that you build in Minecraft, oh, and geez. it will be able to be ported over to the Education Edition. The key element, and this is one point that I really, really want to focus on, is the only way for you to get your builds in front of the education community effectively right now is to have them combined with educational components, to have them combined with lesson plans. Um, yes. That's the way they're going to get the most visibility and the most marketing. And that's one of the reasons why Lynn and I, of course, with uh, MindGage, have been working very, very closely with the Atheon team um, because there's some amazing stuff coming out of there that you know we feel can provide some significant value to the educational community. So in terms of the differences with Education Edition, the big difference, of course, is you guys won't be able to necessarily access it. But again, that should not stop you from continuing to look at ways and talk with us and say, hey, what are ways that we can approach this to make good educational builds? And I'm sure we'll cover that in more detail in the next 20 minutes or so. Absolutely. Um and that's what been one of the most exciting things for me as an educator is writing the, the lesson plans that go with these amazing um, and virtual brilliant. experiences. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I must admit, it's, it's been I, fun. I just turn them into games. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, the way that Garrett, Garrett and I work is I have an idea, um, pitch it to him, and then he makes it 10 times better, and oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> um so yeah, some of the the lessons that um, we've made we are actually featured uh, featured lessons on the website, which has made me very happy. Great for the ego for me. So, um, but <laughs> we've now been working on a specific um, project, which is um, dear to my Australian heart, and I'm been incredibly fortunate to have um, Athian and MindGage involved in this, um, and I've sort of been the client as the teacher, and it's, it started way back when, when I, I realized that I had been given um, a week where I take over Minecraft education for a week. All mentors get a week. And mine's coming up in just over a week's time. And it wow, happened to be... Wow, is it really? Yeah. Oh yeah, so... Um, we started this whole thing in, like, January. What, what I month know. is it? Where, I know. I know. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> and... It's it's just been an absolutely wonderful ride. Why do you say roller coaster? I don't think there's been any downs. Um, but it's it's <laughs> yeah, to the awesome. moon sort of ride. It's been awesome. <laughs> and and it's basically um in Anzac Week, which um for everybody who's not Australian New Zealand, um the Anzac um people are the Australian and New, New Zealand um the sorry, I'm reading it once I'm writing. Um the Australian New Zealand soldiers that went over to Gallipoli um, on April 25th, 1915. And
basically stormed a tiny little cove and got stuck there um, fighting the Turkish army. And the reason it's important to us is because of the stories that came out of there about the Australian and New Zealand spirit and bravery and keeping the humour in, in very adverse conditions. And that became known as the Anzac spirit. And that's one thing I wanted to really focus on. And what better way than to uh, approach a brilliant build team and say, hey, I want to walk on Anzac Cove. I want to actually <laughs> be there. And I want to be able to create little NPCs that represent real people. And I want to be able to talk to them and get to know them. And, and one of the things we talk about is the, the historical figures becoming friends of the past. So that was my educational focus is I want to get kids to really live history and, and understand the Anzac spirit. And, and doesn't, doesn't MC give you really the best tools for that? Like you can even create, we, I mean, we already are working on resource set, uh, packs for this, but like we can create all si sorts of uh, ambient sounds to replicate mm -hmm. things or just yeah. really go to town on it. I and mean, create that. Blocks, you could do pretty much anything now. And apparently they're on the EDU version, just another little uh, bonus to throw out there for not yet. the previous question. Yeah. Yeah, not, oh. command blocks are not yet available on the EDU version. Oh, not really? No. Okay, uh, they're on no. the EDU version. They will be, uh, but oh, yeah. Education Edition runs a little bit behind the PE version. But we okay. are looking yeah, forward to getting yeah. it soon. But I wanna, I'm going to interject, if you don't mind, just for one quick second. So, Lynn, you know, Pengu uh, actually asked mm -hmm. an absolutely perfect question. Where do we find a standard for visual representation of lesson plans? Um, and I think it'll mm -hmm. tie in with getting everybody to go check out the Anzac Cove map that was done. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Pengu, the, the reality of it is around the world, there are so many different teachers teaching so many different subjects in so many different ways uh, based on so many different curriculums that there's no just one single standard for creating these visual representations. It really becomes, um, you know, and when we look at a build or we look at a world or we look at something or we see a teacher with an idea and we say, you know what, that's an idea we'd like to build. Again, it becomes framed up from the, the ground up. But I think we all know uh, what we learn in school. We know that there are mm -hmm. maths. We know that there are sciences. You know, Lynn has a perfect example on the Mindfair server. If you want access to that, please send me a, a DM via Twitter or a tweet via Twitter. Um, but she created an ant and literally split the ant in half and gave the kids an opportunity to explore the interior of the ant, the different body parts of the ant. These are the mm -hmm. types of things that you guys can start creating if you have a passion for it. If you're missing anything or you're thinking, you know, I want to do something that's really, really special for the community. Don't hesitate to reach out to us and just ask us, you know, what do you think? Is there anything that, you know, a lot of teachers are looking to have built right now? Um, and we can talk about those ideas and talk about those things. And I do want to talk mm -hmm. about, but we're going to run out of time. So maybe save it for a different conversation at a later point in time. Maybe. Do we, we actually have a time limit? I, from, from what I remember, <laughs> people were saying, <laughs> we could just ramble on all we want. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's a dangerous so to give us. <laughs> Um, I'm yeah. trying to respect everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> the UK Attention right span time. Okay, it's I guess you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I was over there, I'd to have to be on. in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the point that I was going to make, though, is um, just real quick to tie that off is, you know, I can talk about sort of what goes into creating a good lesson with a world um, just after this. But I think we may as well show you uh, by going yeah, to absolutely. ANZAC, so slash warp ANZAC, A-N-Z-A-C, and this is exactly what Lynn is talking about. This yep. is a lesson in Australia that is always done. Every school mm -hmm. does a lesson on this or finds a way to incorporate this, um, and Lynn's taken it and done an amazing job from the empathy perspective. <laughs> All right, so if you go to warp ANZAC, um join I, me here can I've anybody get here chat too so just in case if you don't uh want to actually think you can copy and paste it <laughs> <laughs> now i can't see if anyone else is here so i'm not it's because everybody's in uh, uh everybody should uh, be in spectate mode hts all okay 
All right, so I, oh, I was going to take a screenshot of everybody being here. It would have been great for my new presentation. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, so <laughs> that's all good. So what you are doing now is you are walking around. Oh, there, I'm seeing people. I'm seeing people. Um, you're walking around Anzac Cove just as they had landed in these great big rowboats, which are completely uncovered, um, and they were getting sniper shot at. So on April 20, 25th, they, they basically um, landed here, quickly set up these tents and supplies and dug holes into the, um, the cliffs. And basically above them were all the Turkish um, um, armies uh, basically doing some great work at snipering. So on the first day, the four hospitals that they set up to uh, that side to on the other side were full. And we we had a great time researching this. And I'd like to do a huge shout out to Ike, who was a historian that really knew <laughs> more than I knew uh, because <laughs> and it's your country's thing <laughs> yeah, and and that says a lot too because i've only had a chance to teach the basics i've never had a right. chance to go off and research all this other extra stuff like this ship here i, can't, oh, yeah, I keep I... forgetting the name of this ship uh but it's it's half sunk in the yeah, water it was it, it was gone. pulling in listing at the time yeah and he was yeah. like no 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 don't don't build that yet because there's details you don't know. And even somebody had already <laughs> built it and Ike pops in and he's like, that boat is not on enough of an angle. And Danfu's like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite incredible. And one thing that um, when we first got this map was I expected you guys to just build a small little cove and put some tents on and go, yep, there's Anzac Cove. No, <laughs> you guys went off to GIS data and got the exact right data and the exact right landscaping <laughs> okay i um, i mean really guys how absolutely brilliant is that so um so i was able to go to the historical pictures and stand somewhere on this map and then take a photo and then map it exactly to the historical photo now I, that gave me chills as an educator because i thought kids can do that you know um and that that really sort of blew me away and i started seeing for the first time even after teaching this for a very long time uh, what anzac cove actually looks like okay i i i feel you know like people who can read a map mm. and see it three-dimensionally in their mind are very very skilled my husband could do it but i can't so <laughs> to be able to walk around like this was absolutely um yeah, that's really important. really it was a, it was a pleasure to make that too i uh <laughs> I asked for some advice in the group in, in the uh, ecosystem, and then of course the people answered. And I'm good oh. friends with Lenta Brisha as well, and he he actually gave me the initial idea with the fact that he created the scale uh, rendering of Earth, and he's been talking to mm. me about some fun things with that that I probably should keep quiet for his sake. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> He's talking about enlisting the usage of like scalable cloud rendering services using Amazon Web Services to pull off his next stunt whenever, if ever. Amazing, amazing, and it it keep, was just keep, incredible. Keep talking, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah let's, let's just say the last oh, project was a seventy-five gig map, so I don't know <laughs> well, if when you'll you be able to download. <laughs> data it's they get quite big that's for sure mm -hmm. it, it, it's surprising he, yeah. he looks at me and he says about... he says champ yeah. what I'm, I'm i'm processing canada right now <laughs> and my data is telling me that it's basically a big swamp are is that that can't be right, <laughs> <That's not> right. <laughs> and i was like well you know there's this funny thing called the ice age <laughs> and now we have thousands of lakes <laughs> <So>. <laughs> There you go. You're an icy swamp. It's proven. <laughs> um, what, once you guys had built this, um, one thing that blew me away, and it, it's probably going to be one of my favorite memories, is by this time I had read a lot of the diaries of the Australian and New Zealand um, soldiers. And I could finally find the place where a certain person was very badly injured and where he crawled and where he was put on the stretcher and where he was taken down to the hospital area 
Um, and of course, for the Australian New Zealanders, we know the famous story about Simpson who had his donkey and he would travel up this path all the way up getting snow on fire and go and rescue as many people as he could and bring them down the mountain again, day after day after day. Um, it's, a power, it's a powerful story. And to have the kids be mm. able to go into a map like this and actually walk around and mm. live that story, to live exactly. that story becomes powerful. And that goes back to one of the big things that, uh, that Minecraft has to provide. And this is just one example, right, Lynn? Oh yeah, we, we've so, we've got um quite a few other different examples. Uh, we can we, quickly go through this, but we could. I think I, I'm going to make a suggestion, and it's completely up to you. But we've got quite a few questions coming in here, and I think it yeah, might yeah, be let's appropriate do that. to have a bit of a question and answer time. Um, oh, I, I love that. Address this question before going any further. Uh, Curry, uh, one three three six. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a leaf. Um, or a lease or a leaf. I know, you know, if it was a seven, it'd be leaf, like totally leaf, man. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, anyway, so Curry asked overall, what is the end goal for MindGage and teaching with Minecraft in general? Um, is there anything else you'd like to expand on in the future? As the founder of MindGage, yeah, I can answer that whole, wholeheartedly. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that the future of education rests in the field of serious games. So when you get an opportunity to go through a game, I remember my earliest learning experience uh, in high school using a game where I went to class, I learned nothing. I played this game, I learned <laughs> everything about history. Uh, and it was the old game Civilizations. And so what I believe in and very truly believe in is the power of creating these game environments where we don't just have a map. You know, I see builders as, a, you know, an amazing, amazing component of it, but not the only component of it. Um, one of the other sides of it requires the command blockers. It requires the uh, resource pack developers to really create a game environment that kids can play through from start to finish. And by virtue of that, they will have learned the concepts and the content that they need to learn. And I think that's the power of the future. So that's the one thing that we are working towards uh, expanding on in the future. So if there's any command blockers out there, if there's anybody else who thinks they might be able to um, work in the game design side of things, please reach out to myself, reach out to Lynn, reach out to Atheon. Um, and, you know, we can all work together in partnership to create some amazing, amazing games for the world of education, especially now that we have uh, Minecraft command blocks coming into education edition. That's been, you know, what I've been waiting for. I'm like a giddy little oh, yes. I'm not, that's ah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm like, and we're, we, we don't even, it's not even out yet, and we're already stockpiling stuff for it. <laughs> like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that, that's the amazing thing about and, it, and, and that's just, why just I keep getting I'm excited. Sorry, just yeah, one second. Can. I don't mean to interrupt, but no, no, I'm being poked with the good old, you know, stage cane saying that we're going to get pulled off soon. So, yeah, no uh, worries. Um, at least off the live stream anyways. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I'm just doing a quick um, group shot here. If everybody wants to come to the, war the wharf. Oh, um, <laughs> slash warp Anzac. Anzac. Warp and then Anzac. um you'll see us all standing over here. Yeah, here they all come. Yeah, um, we're so, gonna get them. Sorry, you go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um I'm cool with sticking around afterwards if you so guys are, yeah. but I just wanted to make sure that we start wrapping up for the sake of the bulk of it. So if anybody wants to bail yeah. out, they're welcome to in five minutes, but uh and if yeah, you have my... more questions, please fire them out as well. Absolutely. And uh, I'm also very interested in uh, getting to know anyone who wants to be get to known. So if anybody wants <laughs> to be adding me on Discord or following me on Twitter, fire us in DMs. I want to I wanna be got to known. known. Right? Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I be got to known too? <laughs> um, I'm also very happy to, um, to get connections on Twitter. Um, I've got two I have different too many. Twitters. Um, Lynn Telfer, um, L Y N N E T E L F E R, is my education one. And uh, if you put MC, that's the YouTube one, which I don't use as much anymore because I'm really into the education side of a bit more now. Um, so please, yes. 
Um, and if you go to um, education.minecraft.net, you'll see some of our, our lessons that we've done there, and you'll see a lot more for my Engage um, account coming as well. So keep your eyes out for that as well. Now, someone asked a very good question. And I think it's a very important thing I do want to mention quickly is how do you get your teachers onto on board? And that's something that um, as an educator, we're, we're also looking at in terms of Minecraft mentors. We're getting out there and telling teachers, hey, this is something that is very vital um, for your classroom in terms of getting your kids ready for the 21st century. And tell them about um, my engage. Um, tell them about uh, the um, Microsoft Minecraft education site um, and get them to basically follow us on Twitter as well. Because we have chats all the time. Um, and, and Garrett can quickly talk about the Minecraft education um, chats that he runs. Actually, Garrett, uh, if you get a chance, it would be wonderful sure. if you could plug the sites. I would say at least yours, because uh, this is very Minecraft EDU stuff intensive. Uh, if anybody yeah. wants to be a part of anything that we're doing, um, I'm very open to a large variety of skill sets. A lot of my team say things like, oh, Sam, he's got no skills. I don't know why you're interested in hiring that person. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Quite frankly, skills can be trained and taught, but passion cannot. So, yeah. right know, on. He's very interested in the, or he, she, whoever is interested. Please feel free to scrape together a response to our build team uh, application uh, questions, and feel free. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is we give you some pointers on how not to make a portfolio. You know, so <laughs> also. I'll also tell you this, you know, if, if you start driving into sort of the, the education side of things as well, um, <laughs> teachers, uh, the vast majority of them out there will look at, you know, even the worst quality build, uh, something that I might do, because <laughs> I'm not a builder, I'm, I'm not professional by any means, um, and be like, oh my God, wow, that is amazing. So, you know, again, they mm -hmm, recognize that there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a growth uh, opportunity there. Um, but as far as plugging the website, I am actually in the process within the next month or so redoing the website. Um, yeah. So I don't want to plug fine. it just yet. The best place to reach out to me is on Twitter at PB Jelly Games or at Mindgage Edu, and I'll put those in the chat as well. Um, but I think you know the the big thing that you guys can rely on Lynn and I for if you're looking to get into the educational space and Chamonks as well because we're we're mentoring him at the same time to you know kind of think about the educational side is to reach out to us um, you know have that mm -hmm. conversation go on to education.minecraft.net and take a look at the typical lesson plans that teachers are creating on there. And you'll start to get a feel for, okay, you know, this is one of the, the lessons that the teacher is using. I wonder, how could I make this type of lesson better? Um, and that will give you your, your sort of scaffolding. And then if you want to go further into the game-based side of things, definitely reach out to me. Um, I'm an expert in that area, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to help you guys kind of design your worlds around particular gameplay that will be exciting. Um, especially if you have an idea for uh, an educational adventure. That is my explicit area of passion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I think we're going to be finishing up, um, but I think yeah, we should be I'm able to take give... a quick break to have a glass of water myself and a quick uh, bio break, but then I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Um, All right. I've just been pacing back and forth in this room this whole time. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's had a workout. We've just been sitting on yeah, a yeah. get my going, right? You know. <laughs> um, yeah, just say we, we can actually show um, just link the um, warps. Even if we don't get much chance to talk about them, um, we've worked with Athian in the past making some beautiful, beautiful worlds. Um, and it was more of a uh, problem-solving game. Um, so the the world that you're talking about that uh, that people can go to, which is uh, Edu Medical, yes. Edu Mars, yes, and 